First, um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this wonderful website. Um, the website is on the board um, right there. I honestly don't know how to say it, so you know, your guess is as good as mine. Um, this website is really good if you're doing facial rigging. Um, so um, you'll go, when you first get on the website, you'll be right here. Um, if you click here, get this little, uh, little intro. You're gonna select play and then you're going to go to level two, okay? Once you get to level two, you're gonna get this naturalistic model. They say photo model, photo model. you can only um, go on the app to use the photo model. I haven't personally went on the app yet, but you know, there's that. Um, so you get this, uh, just like those little uh, sketch of a model, um, and you can bring in the skull. You can also bring in the muscles. And what's great about this is you can see the different facial expressions. And then let's say, let's go to surprise, for example. It shows you exactly what muscles are moving in this. Um, and what you can do is you can change um, everything about it. So change the eyebrows direction of the eyes so when you're doing a bunch of blend shapes um, and trying to figure out like what all can a face do because it seems like when you're doing facial rigging you completely forget what kind of faces a face can actually do this can actually really help so you don't you can't um, you can do more than just like anger and surprise you can like experiment on like what are the things you can do with the face and so this can really help out with doing some facial rigging um, and give you a good start. Um, next, I know it's weird. Why am I on PowerPoint? Well, um, if you have a Mac, you know that with Macs, um, it's really easy to record your screen, right? And you need to record your screen to uh, demonstrate what your rig is doing. With Windows, that's harder. Like, it's, it's hard with Windows. Um, Windows currently has this thing where you can record your screen to record for video games, but it only records, yeah, they, um, it only records one screen, one window, right? So if you're doing a script, right, and you have a little, like, window pop up to, like, show your script, it's not going to record both of those because it thinks of it as two separate windows, and it technically is. So you can't really, you know, record yourself demonstrating what your script does if you're on a Windows. Uh, so um, you can do this with whatever computer you have as long as you have um, PowerPoint. So if you go over to Insert, right here is Screen Recording. If you click Screen Recording, um, and you do, I'll go to Maya. So hopefully it goes to mine. Okay, so you're here, right? Um, if you select select area, let's say you only want this section to be recorded. You don't want the entire thing of Maya. You can just do is select that section, and then you can start recording. And then it'll do a countdown. It'll say like you know you're doing it, and then record all that kind of stuff, and then you can come up here to pause it and stop it, or you can just do what the keys that it tells you to. And then it's gonna upload it onto here, um, onto PowerPoint. Now to save it, all you have to do is right click, and then um, save media as, and then you have your uh, screen capture. This is a really easy, really quick way uh, to do screen capture for uh, a demo reel, um, or even something for class. So if you're in a panic and you're like, I don't know how to record my screen, this is a really quick way to do that. Um, so there's that. All right. So again, I'm gonna be going over some things that you may already know about. Um, you may not know anything about. Um, so uh, next is, um, match uh, translations, rotations, all that kind of stuff. This is actually something new um, in Maya. I think it came out in 2017. Um, but let's make a control for a second. Go here, 
circle, right? Let's say you want this to be where the wrist is, right? You just do a select the curve, select the joint, go to modify, match transformations, and you can either do match all, translation, rotation, scaling, whichever one you uh, want. I'm gonna do match all transformations, and then it's right where it's at. And then you can obviously select um, the vertexes and then rotate it where it needs to be so that these are still like zeroed out. Um, this is a great way of placing uh, controls where they need to be. Um, and again, this is something um, that is newer um, for uh, Maya, so there's that. Um, next is X-Ray. I know we talked about a little bit about X-Ray um, in um, a demo uh, last quarter, um, but in case you weren't there or you just didn't know how we got there, um, I'm gonna show you quickly how to do that. Um, so if you want the geo completely X-rayed, you're gonna select it, you're shading, you can do select X-ray, and then your geo is completely X-rayed. Um, I personally don't use this. I usually just use wireframe because I like to uh, know uh, where my joints are being placed using wireframe. Um, something that I do like to use is um, X-ray joints. Um, so if I click off of it, you can't see it at all. Um, and if, for example, um, you didn't know how uh, x-ray joints got there in the first place because I think it's um, automatically like checked when you open up Maya for the first time. Um, if for some reason you can't find it and you don't know why you can't see your joints anymore, you just select x-ray joints and they're there again. So just to kind of help with like the panic if you're like, where are they? That's how you get it and that's how you can find them. Um, so now we're gonna go into the outline. Okay, so we're gonna go into Outliner. Um, again, haven't named anything, but that's okay. Okay, let's say this is our do not touch uh, group because I think we all have a do not touch group. Um, this is to pretty much tell the animators, please, please, please do not touch this. But they still do, right? <laughs> I've noticed colors work wonders. Um, you can actually col uh, change the color of this and this can help the animators really know, please don't touch this. Um, so if you uh, select it, you go into attribute editor and you're gonna go into display, all right? Click display. First, you're gonna need to check use outliner color. If you don't do this, you're not gonna be able to change the text in the outliner, okay? So you're gonna check it. And then you're gonna go into this little box, double click it, pick whatever color you want. I always pick red because red means stop. And I think the animators know that too. So select whatever color you want, hit done. And then if you select off of it, it's that color. Um, again, um, this is a great way just for like the do not touch one. It's the only one I use it for. Um, it's just to really stop them from touching things. Um, and if you uh, don't want it to be red anymore, all you have to simply do is just uncheck use outliner color and it's not red anymore. So that's de definitely just like a simple thing that you can do and put into your rigs that can help you with complications down the road of animators touching things that they shouldn't touch. Um, as you can probably tell, I've had to deal with that. Um, so now we're gonna talk about organization because we all love organization. Um, so, we've all seen this, right? Um, so, we've all seen these colors that are on the side. Raise your hand if you've ever changed the colors of these. Have anyone ever used this? You have? Yeah. You showed me. Yeah, okay. Um, so, you can definitely change these colors. Um, honestly, uh, you should probably change the colors. It's going to be annoying to change all the colors and all that, but um, organized wise, it's really nice. Um, so let's say um, this arm, right, the left arm, um, I wanted to know right away when I came into here um, that I wanna find the left arm, right? Usually, I would have to go and look for the name, right, of like whatever joint I named it as. But 
if I change the color to all of them being pink, for example, just all of them being pink, then if I have like a large amount of joints, I can just look through it and be like, okay, I know that my left arm joints are pink. I'm gonna look through it. And I go through it all and I'm like, pink, are you, you know, my left arm? And then, yep, that's it. This can actually help you a lot when it comes to joints and looking for them in here because when you start creating more complicated rigs, you're gonna have a lot of joints. Um, again, this takes a bit to uh, change the colors of, um, but after you do it for a long enough time, it's just, all right, left arm, change it to this color. Right arm, I'm gonna change it to this color. Um, this can really help. Something that I also do is once I'm done and I'm happy, with how I like my weights, I just change the color to green because green means we're good to go. Um, now they have a dark green and a light green. Um, again, I like organizing my things. Um, if you've ever done um, a biped and you've you know rigged uh, the jaw or like the eyes and all that, um, you know the first thing you need to do is have all the weights. Uh, be completely white um, for the head before you can do anything else. You want them all the weights just to be there at the head. Um, when I do that, I always change it to this color, which means that, okay, I have all the weights that I need it, um, that I need to put on like the head joint. Um, but for me, that means that um, I still have to take weights from other uh, joints. So for example, um, I've painted the weights for the head, right? It's got everything it needs to be. It's completely white. Everything else, you know, is black. Like, um, but I know I still need, like, the jaw, for example, to be, um, for weights to be taken from the head. So I do as I make it dark green. Um, I don't know how to explain this. I'm sorry. I'm trying to explain it. Uh, it pretty much I'm trying to say is I know that I need to uh, take weights from the head joint, but I don't need to give joints to the head joint. I guess it's the best way to explain it. Um, hopefully this makes sense. Again, I'm very particular on how to do it, but all I'm saying is change the colors. They're nice. Um, so then is the thumbtack. Does everyone know the thumbtack? Does anyone know how to use thumbtack? Okay, this will make your life easy. Let's say you're taking um, weights um, from um, particular joints. You know you're trading weights back and forth with them, right? Let's say you're taking these three, right? Um, but let's say they're like all throughout the entire thing. Like you have to scroll down for one of them to paint it and then you have to go back to the other one and that can get really annoying. Um, what you can do is, is you select the joints that you know you're gonna be sharing the weights to. So let's say it's these last three. Shift, select all of them, and then you're gonna go up to here and they're by themselves. If you want to get back to where all the rest of the joints are, just undo it. I will say, um, if you're like me and you replace weights more than you add weights, um, just double check that you have everything locked that aren't going to be uh, swapping weights with and then do it. So, like that. Um, Again, this makes your life easier. It, you don't have to waste time searching for things. It, that can actually take a lot of time just to look for things um, in there. Um, what? Hammer tool. Hammer tool, I don't want to. Here's the thing, I'm not going to teach the hammer tool. If you want to know more about the hammer tool, look it up. But I know too many people who abuse the hammer tool. <laughs> But I'm not going to teach it in here because I don't want to be the one responsible for the abuse of the hammer tool. So if you want to know more about the hammer tool, look it up. But it gets abused. That's all I'm saying. Um, so does everyone know how to isolate? Yes? No? No? Okay. So let's say you are you magically now have joints for your fingers, you know, and you're, you're paying the weights for the fingers. Um, and let's say you've got this little middle finger, you're trying to paint the weights, you can't really see them because the other fingers are in the way, right? Well, you can isolate them. So you select the geo, you're gonna right click, you're gonna hit vertexes, you're gonna hold shift, 
select the first vertex, the one right next to it, double click on it. This obviously isn't a perfect loop, but that's okay. So we'll just, okay, so all of it is good. Oops. So you've got the entire ring now completely selected. Um, you can do is if you hit shift period, it selects the ones right next to them. Um, if you select uh, shift comma, it goes back to that one, okay? Shift period, and bring it all the way to where you want your finger uh, to paint weights for, right? Then you're gonna hit control one, it isolates it, and then you can do is right click, object mode, and then you can start painting your weights. This is a great way to just completely isolate your finger or whatever thing else that you need to do. Um, it just makes your life easier because then you don't have to like fret about not being able to see what you're painting weights for and actually putting weights on something that don't need weights. Um, again, I've noticed that this works best with the fingers, um, but I even do it sometimes with like the mouth as well, just the inside part. Um, so we got that. Um, so then we were taught this. Um, so. I don't know if he still does this, but Professor Schindler um, teaches you, like let's say you're painting the shoulder and you wanna see if the shoulder uh, looks good in all the different positions it's gonna be in, right? Um, he'll do is he'll say, paint the weights, and then every so often just move that joint around and see if it works. Something that's easier that you can do is, let's say you're trying to figure out uh, the shoulder, right? Um, select it, the joint, and you're gonna just you're just gonna key it, okay? You're just gonna key it on the very first frame, right? Um, go further down. I always go, I don't know why. I always go to 35, it's just my number, right? Um, and you're gonna do is, is you're gonna move it wherever you want. I usually go all the way up first. As you can tell, we didn't paint the weights properly. We just kind of put it in there, so there's gonna be some issues. But you're just gonna bring it all the way up, and then you're gonna key it, right? And now, you just slide through it, and now this is a perfect way to see if your weights look good wherever the arm is going. Um, something that I recommend if you're starting out doing this, I'd write down what joints you've went and keyed at so that once it's, uh, you don't have to key it anymore and you like how the weights are and you're like, I'm done, then you can cross it out, like the name of that joint. But definitely write down the joints that you're keying so that you don't accidentally give your uh, rig to an animator and there's joints that are keyed because that's embarrassing <laughs> and that's a big no-no. So just remember just to like delete the keys afterwards. Uh, but this is actually very helpful just to see that everything's working out well. Um, I think that is it. That is it. Again, just some very quick uh, tips and tricks um, that you can help to make your rigging just go much faster. Um, again, a lot of organizing um, and just some certain things that will help you with doing your demo reel as well.